Hello and welcome to this Python tutorial. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that homework. No worries if you couldn't make it work. It was actually quite of a challenge because that involved research, you know, doing some research online on what tools to use to make single predictions with CNNs. But anyway, even if you didn't succeed, well, trying to do the homework is excellent practice because that's a big part of the job of a deep learning scientist. The deep learning scientist spends a lot of his time doing research on how to implement models or even sometimes on how to use them. So what you did is definitely real life deep learning. All right, so as you can see right now, my model is training and the training is about to end. So we will be ready soon to make that single prediction. We are at the last epoch. We reached an accuracy of 86% on the training set. And let's see the accuracy on the test set, that is on the validation set. Here we go, we are about to get it, and, and, and we got 81%, so quite close to what we got before. Perfect, we are now ready to make that single prediction. So, as explained in the homework documentation, I added a new subfolder in the dataset folder that is called single prediction. And basically, this new folder contains two images that are named catadog1 and catadog2. And one of these images contains a dog and the other contains a cat. We can actually have a look at them to see what they are. So the first image, Cato Dog 1, is obviously a dog, a beautiful dog. And the second image is a very cute cat. So now the challenge is to make our CNN model that we just built to predict correctly if each of these images contains a cat or a dog. So let's do it and we're going to start with the first image, Catadog1, which, remember, contains a dog. So, what do we need to start with? First step is to import NumPy, because we will actually use a function by NumPy to pre-process the image that we are going to load, so that it can be accepted by the predict method that we're going to use to make our single prediction. So let's do it, let's import NumPy, and let's give the same shortcut as usual, NP, and here we go. And let's do it. We're going to do it step by step and execute each line one by one. All right, so NumPy is well imported. Now we need to import a second module, which is the image module from Keras. And more precisely, from the pre-processing module from Keras. So let's import this image module. Import then image. And we import this image module from Keras.preprocessing. Here we go, we are ready to import image, and that's done. Perfect, now third step. The third step is to load our image on which we want to make our prediction. So to do this, we're going to use the load image function by Keras, which belongs to the image module, that's why we had to import image here. And so we're going to create a new variable that I'm going to call test image, because you know we're testing the model on new predictions. And this test image will contain the cat or dog one image that we're about to load. So let's load it. To load it, we use the image module and then dot to get the right function. And this right function is called load underscore img, then parenthesis. And inside the parenthesis, we just need to import two arguments. The first argument is the path that leads to this image cat or dog one but we have to include the image because basically we are loading the image. And the second argument is the target size that must be the exact same dimensions that were used for the training. So here we used 64 times 64 dimensions for the training set images. And therefore that's what the predict function will expect even for new images. Okay, so first let's import the path. So the path is specified in quotes. And so basically that's the same our working directory starts at the dataset folder, so we can start the path with dataset, then slash. Then we need to go to the single prediction folder because this is this folder that contains the Caradog1 image. So single underscore prediction to access this folder, then slash again because we need to input the image because we are loading it. So the name of the image is cat underscore or underscore dog underscore one. Here we go. And let's not forget the extension. We have to include it, which is JPG. All right, so that's for the first argument. And now the second argument, 
is the target size. And so basically we need to take the exact same target size that was used for the training set or the test set, that's the same. So we can copy it and paste it here in our load image function. Here we go, now we are ready to load our first image, Caro Dog one So let's do it. I'm going to select this line and execute. Here we go, the test image is well imported. We can check it out in Variable Explorer. Here it is, and so far, the type is an image, and it has the dimensions 64 by 64 as required. So good, that's the first required step done, but that's not enough. Now what we need to do is add a new dimension to this test image, because remember, the input shape in the input layer of our CNN has three dimensions, 64 by 64 by three. And remember the three here is because it's a colored image. And therefore, now what we have to do is to use another function by image, which is the image to array, and that will allow to create this third dimensional array that will have the same format as the input shape in the input layer of our CNN. So let's do it. Let's use the image to array function. So next line of code. And so basically we're going to modify this test image variable because this will go from being an image of two dimensions to a three dimensional array. So we'll just take our variable again and modify it by using the image dot img underscore two underscore array function parenthesis. And inside the parenthesis, we just need to input our image that is contains in the test image variable. And therefore we simply input here test underscore image. All right, now let's check it out. This test image variable is gonna go from being an image of two dimensions, 64 by 64, to an array of three dimensions, as you can see here, 64 by 64 by three. So exactly as the input shape that was used for the architecture of our CNN. Perfect, but that's still not enough. Now what we need to do is add one dimension again to our three-dimensional array. And I'm going to explain why. We're about to use the predict method to make that single prediction. But if we use the predict method directly, well, look at what happens. So to use the predict method, it's exactly the same as for ANNs. We take our classifier, then dot, and then predict. And inside the predict method, we input the sample for which we want to predict the outcome. That is our test image. So let's see what happens if I input test underscore image directly. So I'm going to execute this, but we will get an error saying that we will need four dimensions instead of three dimensions. All right, let's do it. Here we go. And we have an error. Error when checking expected convolution 2D to have four dimensions but got array with shape 64 by 64 by three. So basically now what we have to do is add a new dimension to our test image. And to do this, we're gonna use the expand dims function that will add this dimension. We're just doing this to give what the predict method expects. And for those of you curious to know what this dimension corresponds to, well, it corresponds to the batch because in general, the functions of neural networks like the predict function cannot accept a single input by itself, like the image we have here, it only accepts inputs in a batch. Even if the batch contains one input, the inputs must be in the batch. And this new dimension that we are creating right now corresponds to the batch. The batch that will contain the inputs, whether there is one input or several inputs. So here we will have one batch of one input, but then in general we can have several batches of several inputs and we can apply the predict method on that. So for example, if for this new dimension we had two elements, that means that we would have two batches containing single or several inputs. So let's do it. We need to modify our variable again. So test image again equals, and now we're gonna use the expand dims function. But this expand dims function is not taken from image, the image module by Keras, it is taken from NumPy. So here, instead of using image, we're gonna use NP, which is the shortcut for NumPy, and we're gonna use the expand underscore dims parenthesis, and inside this expand dims function, we need to input two arguments. The first argument is of course our test image, because that's the test image we want to expand, that is add a new dimension. And the second argument is axis, 
and axis is to specify the position of the index of the dimension we are adding. So we need to add this dimension in the first position because again, that's what the predict method expects and therefore we will specify axis equals zero because axis equals zero means that the index of this new dimension we're adding is gonna have the first index that is index zero. So let's do it. Let's input the first argument test underscore image. That's the first argument. And now the second argument axis equals zero. All right, and now my test image has three dimensions, 64 by 64 by three. And now when I'm going to execute this, we will get four dimensions, one, 64, 64, and three. Let's check it out. I'm going to execute. Here we go. Four dimensions, one, 64, 64, and three. And now we have exactly what the predict method expects. And so if now I select this and execute, indeed, we get our final prediction. And we can see it is one, but don't worry, that is not our final word. We will see what one corresponds to. So now what I'm gonna do is put the result of that single prediction in a new variable that I'm gonna call result. So equals, result equals classifier.predict test image. And so now if I execute this, well, this result here, array one, will go into the variable result. So let's execute this. All right, now as you can see, if I click on result, well, I have my new single prediction, one. But now, does one correspond to cat or one correspond to dog? Let's check it out. I'm going to press OK. And to get that information whether one corresponds to cat or dog, well, we need to use an attribute that is called class indices, and that will tell us exactly the mapping between the strings cats and dogs and their associated numeric values, zero and one. So let's get this. We need to take our training set. Then we add dot. And then we add this attribute, class underscore indices. And now if we select this and execute, we get the mapping. And so here we can clearly see that cats correspond to zero and dogs correspond to one. Perfect. So that means that the prediction by our CNN model for this first image, cat or dog one, is correct because this image contains a dog and our model predicted a dog. And if you want to make it even more simple for you or for any person that is going to use your model, we can add this. That is this if condition, if result, then we're gonna get the value of one here. But as you can notice, this result is an array of two dimensions. This is the first line and this is the first column. So to get this one here, we need to add a double pair of brackets to get the first line and the first column. And so here we need to take the first line which has index zero, so zero, and the first column which has index zero as well. And so we add a zero here. And so if result zero, zero, that is basically the result of the prediction, equals equals one, then colon, and then we say, what happens if this condition is verified? So we're gonna create a new variable that we're gonna call prediction, and that's our ultimate prediction in text, cat or dog. And so we're gonna say that if the result is one, then the prediction is going to be the string dog and else, colon, then the prediction is going to be equal to the string cat. Because if result equals one, then we know it's a dog because one corresponds to dog. And else, if the result equals zero, then the prediction will be cat because zero corresponds to cat. All right, and now if I execute this, this new variable prediction will be created and will contain the final result in text. So let's do it, execute, here we go. And the final prediction for the first image is this beautiful dog, perfect. Okay, and now let's test if it also gives a correct prediction for a cat, that is for the second image, cat or dog two. So let's remind what it is. That's this beautiful cat. And so now let's see if our model predicts correctly. So what we simply need to do is to replace here caradog1 by caradog2, and then we don't have anything to do. The code is ready to get the final prediction, and therefore what I'm gonna do is reselect everything and execute to get this new final prediction. And now let's see if the model predicted right. We're gonna go to variable explorer, and the prediction is a cat, perfect. 
congratulations to the model. Our model made a correct prediction one more time. And, uh, and by the way, when we look at the test set validation accuracy, well, remember, we obtained between 81 and 83%. So, you know, our model had 82% chance to make correct predictions. And that's how we got these good results. So congratulations, if you managed to get these single predictions, you really did a great job. And also congratulations to those of you who tried. Don't worry if you didn't manage to get the final prediction. By trying, you definitely made some progress and also some experience of deep learning because that's exactly how deep learning is. You always have to experiment to make your models work for some specific tasks. So congratulations in both cases. This is now the end of this section, and now we're going to move on to the next section about evaluating, improving, and tuning convolutional neural networks. Another challenge is waiting for you so that you can practice even more. Another podium will be involved, and I can't wait to see your results and the medal you will obtain. So I'll see you in this next section, and until then, enjoy deep learning!